for what is effectively round three of our league run one of the video and uh, as I said in the deck deck we're currently one and one and kind of I'm kind of tempted to keep hands like this we have a lot of cheap spells we have a thermo alchemist but uh, only one land on the play I feel like we can do better certainly and there there are like a reasonable amount of burn decks that really really don't want a mulligan because like philosophy of fire type stuff where it's like if the average spell that you draw is worth three points of damage you need seven of those total uh but this deck is not really like that so the games generally go on a little bit longer and this hand is way better than our six so we are in there and uh we have alchemist we have axe temper and i think i just want this land even though it's not like you know we have a three mana card that we necessarily want to play with it or whatever but we do want to make our land drops, and I don't think that I necessarily want to draw a spell instead, so I think we keep it on top. So Courtyard indicates to me Mardu, hopefully this does not get pushed, but I would expect nothing less. And it doesn't, so hey, we win. Not win-win, but, you know, short-term victory. Uh, so we have Alms of the Vein that we could just fire off right now, which I think I like, actually. We still have Axe Temper to deal with things. This only goes upstairs. We could save this for Madness value, but I already have a Madness card to go with it. And basically, the sooner I power out this Bedlam Reveler, the better, I think. And thanks to Thermo Alchemist, Alms effectively does 4 damage, which is, like, not great for 3 mana, but... I do like that Alchemist kind of just like powers up your burn spells. So the raw disintegration, that is acceptable. Also good to just fire off the sorcery and keep our instance. But this is a Gideon, we're going to have to go after it probably. Uh, is it worth it to axe this? It's possible, but we don't have to do that yet. We can just temper now, redirect, and then untap and make our decision. Like, we could just cast temper, or we could basically axe for free. And that, that would put four cards in our graveyard, or four spells in our graveyard for the Reveler. So I think it's worth it. And plus, my opponent like hasn't played any creatures, so I'm not sure how good this axe is going to be. Obviously, it could snipe something like a Glorybringer or an Avacyn, but Cut can do the same, albeit you know a little, little more inefficiently. But so we use a bunch of cards to take out Gideon. It's okay in theory because we have Reveler to refuel, which is nice. But yeah, since my opponent didn't play anything on the first three turns, they either have a lot of reactive cards, but they didn't play a Fatal Push, so they're probably slow reactive cards, right? So it's Disintegration, lots of land, expensive cards like more Gideons. If they had another Gideon, I assume they would have played it here, especially with how many resources I committed to actually taking it out. Uh, and we, we hit our land, but ETB's tapped. And I think that's fine, actually, because I think I'd rather just cut the Scrap Heap anyway. So, more lands for my opponent, not too surprising, considering what their opening was. <clears throat> At this point, it's pretty clear that they don't have a powerful 4 or 5 drop, so I'm pretty sure they have another Disintegration, but... So this is kind of cool. Uh, we have Reveler for 3, discarding Fiery Temper. So we're going to temper the Exemplar, and this allows them to bring back Scrounger, but that's okay. And they just don't, so, eh, beads. No disintegration, so that's kind of weird. Uh, now we actually have options. 
Uh, so we have another Reveler, which is nice, but we're going to want to use all our other spells first. Uh, so I think to check and see if the coast is clear for Avacyn, we do this first. And since I have Prowess, they can't surprise me with Avacyn, so if they have Avacyn, they should just play it right now anyway. Um, but if Defiance resolves, I can just attack in for free. So bring back Scrappy, get an attack in for four. They're at eight already, and I basically haven't done anything. You know, it's like I got a free Alms of the Vein and a couple of Thermo Alchemist triggers, you know. You kind of just kill them incidentally, which is nice. And with with cut ribbons, they have to play like fairly defensively, which they don't want to do. All right, decisions, decisions. So I could go for the kill. I could certainly axe the inspector and flow them. And how bad of a spot does that put me in? Not like a terrible one. They do have disintegration. Kind of a beat, but since I have Reveler to refuel, I'm not super worried about it. Like there's, there is definitely a point in the game where you switch from trying to control the board to just trying to burn them out. And I think it was at that time, and I think it was kind of free too because of like how poor their draw was, and even if things went poorly, things were still okay for me, so. Uh, a lot of reasonable considerations here. Mardu's pretty grindy after board most of the time, so Reveler makes a decent amount of sense. And obviously you have to make sure that you're not boarding in like too many Chandra-type cards while also boarding this in, because then they're not going to be as potent. Uh, how many Faith of the Devoteds I want, I'm unsure of. And like how many Chandras I want, I'm pretty unsure of. Where it's like, I could see there being, you know more of this type of thing but being on the draw I'm kind of wary so I'm gonna board in these reactive cards and I'm not quite sure what to cut I can see cutting alms because it doesn't affect the board it does you know give you a little life buffer but if they're not super aggressive that shouldn't matter all that much but hmm. past that I think I do want to keep some of the faiths just because it is kind of grindy it's just like how threat dense do I want to be? How clunky do I want to be? Like when you're playing against a deck with counter spells, just having more threats is really important. Or you're playing against Black Green Delirium, they might have disenchance. And just having this constant source of damage is pretty nice. Uh, but for this matchup, I think I just want to draw one, only one. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, who knows. So uh, I want to keep all the flows because of Scrap Heap Scrounger. Axe could be good, could be horrible. Like if they side into. Mostly Planeswalkers side out a lot of their creatures, then Axes, and they have like a lot of targets. And then uh, Collective Defiance is like the other clunky card, but it attacks, it attacks Planeswalkers pretty well. So I don't know. I think I want to keep them. Uh, I think I'm just cutting two Lightning Axes. Which seems kind of silly. It's like one of my few cards that actually interacts with Heart of Kirin, but we'll try this. Again, this is kind of a learning experience, you know? This is not a real deck, and I'm certainly not super familiar with it, so... Uh, my hand has the Smoldering Marsh problem, for sure. And they're on six cards. Like, I'm kind of tempted to keep it, because it's like... They're already getting clunky post-board, and I can't imagine that their draw is going to be too aggressive. And my hand is pretty good. Like, if I get to tor Tormenting Voice and Temper on three, I like my spot a lot. So, I'm just going to keep. Like, what am I looking for on six? Basically, this hand, but, like, a better basic and down a card. Like, basically, like, would I happily keep this hand on six? And the answer is definitely yes.
So I'll play this Lou turn one because in theory I could rattle off running basics and play Smoldering Marsh untapped. Uh, if I do run off running basics, maybe I'd want to cycle this Lou, but it's kind of neither here nor there. I feel like most likely I'm just going to be trying to make my land drops. All right, so Bliss is cool, especially on turn three. One of the things I was kind of scared about was uh, getting into the trials, actually. So, do I Tormenting Voice? If so, what do I voice away? I think I'm just going to voice away the cut, because I have other ways of like killing three toughness things, and they don't really have four toughness things, so... I guess, in theory, I probably should have waited, because maybe I want to play a different land, but I don't think it's a big deal. So they have a Nahiri, which is important because it's not named Gideon. What am I doing about that Nahiri? What am I doing? Could go after it, but it's going to take a lot of investment. Like, it's going to take three cards, basically. I don't know how I feel about that plan. If they ultimate, they could get something potentially good. It's like an Avacyn or what have you, but it is possible that at some point I ding Nahiri to prevent the ultimate, but for right now, I think I'm just going upstairs. Maybe this is a bad idea, because this doesn't really do anything. Maybe I should go after Nahiri. That said, upstairs. Alright, so now we're kind of flooded with no more card filtering stuff except for Collective Defiance, which may or may not be good, I don't know yet. Transgress the Mind's an interesting discard. Like, that card interacts with me, you know? Like, discarding that and then playing Needle Spire certainly indicates something. <laughs> yeah, Sweltering Stones is not really doing it. <clears throat> so... I will choose me for the discard, choose Ballista for the thing, opponent for the other thing, playing basic in case I draw another Smoldering Marsh, which isn't a big deal, but I think it's correct. I'm going to put a counter on Ballista, ding me for an extra point. This is certainly a good way to turn on Bedlam Reveler, too. So if I draw Reveler, we're just kind of in business. So our pickups were not great. We could basically run it back. I think it's time we establish faith. Actually get a little something going. We do have a Ribbons in our graveyard too, which could potentially finish a game, so. Obnixilis, I'm like mostly fine with. Aha, genius. Alright, so we're kind of doing it. Just gotta 
Be careful not to die to one of these planeswalkers. I guess they get to exile my faith if they want to, which is which is fine. We got to ding them and uh, take them off of loyalty. Like I don't think holding faith for a long time is gonna really get the job done. So I don't actually mind that exchange, but it's definitely not a thing that I thought about beforehand. All right, more defiances. So if we keep all our cards, we can actually just kill our opponent next turn. So I think I like that plan. I guess Shambling Vent throws it off a little bit. But even assuming they do shambling vent us, still have cathartic reunion to actually draw a bunch of gas. So we might not actually need ribbons to finish. Oh, I'm drawing off Obnix list, so there is always hope. Well, here comes the vent. So vent is going to outpace my cut ribbon, so I have to do something. And I guess I'm getting Obnixilus emblemed. <laughs> oh, by force. So I got them down to five, they could vent up to seven, and then if I draw an untapped land, they would be dead. Uh, I feel like whenever a player draws a card, I lose two life. So they should probably wait on like Nahiri me to, they should just like ultimate, right? And then draw an extra card, deal me two extra. I don't think it matters, but yeah, it could affect the outcome of the game, certainly. All right, I accept your terms. This puts me to seven, emblem puts me to five. And Ribbons puts you to dead. Boom. 